Whereas if you, with the uh, indigenous people who've never left the earth, which is the mother god, which is Gaia, um, they always understood the cyclical nature of life, like the woman's cycles. You know, we, we women cycle with the moon, we menstruate with the moon. And um, the feminine um, is about cyclical life, whereas the um, Western mind is about, you know, we go, we walk out on a plank, death's like a plank, you walk it and you drop into the God knows what, that's the end of you, it's linear. And um, the black goddess is wonderful because she's the goddess of death and destruction. And in the indigenous world, and in India, um, she's the goddess who takes you through death, but also brings you out the other side. So there's no end, like in the Western mind. And that's why our culture is so terrified of death. It doesn't have the cyclical understanding of death and rebirth, which is incredibly important. And that's what I found, actually. When I went into my own soul, this is what's so wonderful, I mean, about death and dying, is I know that I go on. My body, my body will die. I mean, I've watched it die with chemotherapy. I used to watch pieces of flesh fall off, my hair fall out, you know, ulcers and everything. So I have no doubt my body's going to die. And I mean, I don't want it to, but that's okay. It's not, I'm not so attached to it anymore. But what's so, the black goddess is about the feminine energy that, you know, the, god, the gods and goddesses are energies in ourselves, archetypes. And they help us through, if we can understand these archetypes, they're there to actually, they're parts of us that help us through and understand our, the deeper meaning of life and death. And the black goddess, whom I've painted in many big pictures actually, she's been very important to me. She appeared to me often too, you know, visions when I meditate and dream and when I'm having body work. Um, and this black goddess, she would come into my dreams and she's around in many people's dreams at will at the moment. She's a very important part of the feminine that's rising in our culture. She's the energy about the endings and beginnings, death and destruction. And it is frightening and I mean it is terrifying to watch yourself die unless you understand the bigger picture. And, she, and once you understand the black goddess, she's the energy that will take you through this and strip you down to the bones and everything in you that's false is stripped off too. And then she'll recycle you into a higher evolutionary person. So she's actually worshipped in India as Kali. In fact, she's considered the greatest of all goddesses, the creator and the destroyer. Um, and she's in many cultures. Our, the Aboriginal culture have her here. Um, what other cultures have her? Oh, she's all over the world, the Celtic. In, in, in all the, the earth cultures, all the people who've stayed on the earth, the indigenous people, they all understand her well. And hence, they don't have the great terror that we have about dying. And um, so she's the wonderful part of myself that I found that understands that it's just, you know, we go out of, the body dies, but the spirit goes on and recycles. And, and same with reincarnation. I can remember many of my past lives now. And I have no doubt about reincarnation. With it. I don't understand it fully, but I remember very clearly what's happened to me. And it's been very helpful to understand this incarnation. And to know that I'll go on. And um, it's wonderful, really. It's been a great gift. And the cancer kind of was um, there to wake me up to all this. It was a gift. So um, I feel very blessed to have had this whole experience. I'll be through every. I'll go through the whole lot again, actually, to learn what I've learnt from this. Hmm. Did you find yourself drawn to any specific kind of media? There is a noticeable use of gold and metallic colours in your work. Do these colours have any significance for you? Well, as I said before, I'd never painted in my life before. In fact, um, virtually anyway. Um, yeah, I just got onto acrylics. I don't know why I chose acrylics. I just seemed to... I oh, know, they're water-based too. I didn't want to have any turps around me because I was frightened of chemicals. Um, and I just went into the shop and bought a whole pile of paints and some... I love gold and um, mucked around with acrylics. I, I used pencils for, you know, the first hundreds and hundreds of paintings I did in my diaries, they're just pencils and papers, but the first um, mandala I ever did was done with acrylic. And I had these lovely gold t-shirt stuff that I used to put on t-shirts and I stuck it on the paint. And it was so beautiful, actually. It was on my birthday, actually, I remember. It was in March, and it was called The Goddess Dances, and I'll, sh oh, I'll show it to you, it's beautiful. I kept it, it's so magnificent. And the metallic paint was so beautiful. It shone back at me, and I love gold. And I think, I just loved it. I just think gold, and, and that's why I love the matte acrylic background, 
and then I'd bring out with the gold and the uh, metallics certain stuff and it gave it another dimension and I think it was about the light in myself coming you know waking up the gold was kind of a spirituality that started to come through and just about all my arts got a lot of gold and silver and um, yeah reflective stuff and I love it because when you put a candle in front of this type of art it takes on another dimension too the, the gold bits stand out and the others recess so it's kind of magical mm. and, I, and I like glittery stuff kind of childlike and yeah spiritual I guess yeah which of your artworks are most significant to you? Oh, the big six-foot canvas ones. Um, what happened was uh, I started to realise how theologically abused I'd been, actually, in my upbringing. It was a very pre-Vatican Christian, <laughs> Catholic background, where um, it was incredibly patriarchal and very anti-female bodies. And um, my, my family was like that too. And um, from the drawings, and also it was coming up from my imagery, from dreams and um, meditations, was that the way women, well, I'll be specific, this woman, I, I felt really, as a child, I wanted to do something spiritual. I would like to have been a priest or something. But I was told very clearly by the Catholic Church, look, you're only a woman. Even though I topped all the classes in catechism, you're only a woman, you know? You'll clean the altar kind of thing, and the men will worship God. Know your place, woman. <laughs> and, um, and that was the theme of my upbringing. Know your place, woman. You're only a woman. And um, God was very much a man who was up there in the sky and looked down on women. And, and Eve was evil. She brought all the evil into the world. And being in a woman's body wasn't exactly... Um, well, I just felt shamed, actually. And I'd been abused quite a lot in my family and uh, sexually abused too and, and, and sexually abused in the broader sense by Catholicism actually your body was evil you know women's bodies in particular were particularly evil you know that rubbish and then um, I was abused around my menstruation too quite a lot I was ashamed about that and there was this common theme about being woman was down there you know and a lot of shame around it uh, and Mary was kind of not a woman I wanted to identify with, and I mean this, the way she was presented to me anyway. Uh, Mary was to me a very insipid person who was in the background and um, didn't have much power and um, certainly didn't have a career and go to work and do the things I wanted to do. So I felt, I, I felt Catholicism was very demeaning of me actually. And the nuns who taught me too, I found were, some of them were very disturbed women very abusive and a lot of the women in the convent I was at boarding school with actually had breakdowns in fact the head nun there was very very sick in the head very self-hating and hated anything to do with sexuality um, so I left school feeling very confused about being a woman and being at peace with my femininity so it was interesting that the uh, the goddess starts appearing to me in my th in my dreams and in in my um, work, and that was an important part of my healing is reclaiming the feminine. In fact, it's been the whole journey really. It was no accident I got a um, cancer of the blood, which is the blood mysteries of women had been put down for such a long time in our whole culture, and um, I went looking deeply into my own soul about the feminine and reclaiming what was feminine, and finding a new type of masculinity in myself, which has been lovely. I really had to learn to um, reclaim the intuitive, reclaim the artistic, um, reclaim the deep knowing that I, my intellect had taken over. You know, I'd been taught at medical school and to trust external power and what other people said. Um, and I started reclaiming knowing my own deep knowing, which has been a wonderful, wonderful awakening in me. And, and as I've reclaimed the feminine in myself, um, I was very masculine, actually. A very patriarchal woman, you know, very competitive, very um, out, out there for external power. Uh, one of the boys. Um, quite competitive with men, actually. So that's all changed, actually. I feel very powerful in my own self these days as a woman, and I trust my own deep knowing. 